Right, um, I'm welcoming to Doad, Nick. I'm gonna call you Nick, right? Is that cool? Yeah, yep, that's all good. Hey, how are you going? What's up? I'm good. Yeah, I'm good. I'm good. How are you? Um, I'm good, thanks. I um, I'm actually really surprised I've caught you because you're always blooming making content, posting videos. I just saw on your Instagram literally like two minutes ago. You posted. A video. <laughs> yeah, hard out now. Nah, fuck up. I have been busy, but I'm trying to actually slow it down just a little bit because um. Oh, I kind of fucking burnt myself out a little bit, just putting on a massive expectation on my own self to um, create content, to put smiles on people's faces. And um, yeah, I kind of stopped listening to my body, mm. you know, tell me, bro, we're tired, man. Give us a fucking break. And I was like, no, bitch, no, we can't, you know. And then, oh, hello, not stuck in bed, couldn't get out of bed. So, oh, well. Yeah, well, I mean, you bloody work really hard i see you pumping out content and for for me when i come from a radio background that was like the job right the goal is content mm, content make this yeah. make that and i'm like yeah. damn i'm not that much of an exciting person like i get up and i eat breakfast <laughs> and i go to work yeah. so how do yeah, you even come up with the ideas that you come up with and the characters that you oh i reckon i've fucking oh everybody has lived a out of it um life uh, i have i have lived a real out of it life and i just like to kind of reenact those experiences because some of them were pretty fucked and <laughs> yeah i just i've got the wigs you know we're in lockdown i've got the fucking time so i just thought oh fuck it hey um yeah. really quickly because i feel like a lot of people that are tuning in they know you as like nix is like the skit girl as the funny chick on mm. instagram or facebook but do you want to tell us a little bit about you like how you want to describe yourself for everyone that's listening oh um yeah, I suppose uh, uh, I've been through heaps, uh, just like everyone else, I suppose. Um, I lost my, I lost a child who was 16 months old, my son. And um, yeah, I just, I fucking went down a, a really dark spiral, uh, out of control, drugs and all of that. And um, I lost my other children, my husband, everything, I lost everything. And then, yeah, two years ago, I ended up in jail. And I, when I got out, I thought, you know what, fuck it. I'm going to get my shit together. And, yeah, I turned to Facebook um, to try to get my husband's attention, actually, you know, to try oh, to yeah. show him, hey, look, I'm fucking sober. You know, I am giving it a go. Um, here, see, here's a video. I'm on my way to my voluntary job. You know, look, I'm, I'm going to my drug and alcohol counselling. Because I had bullshitted so much to him, uh, you know, he, I lost that that faith from him and I lost that trust and things. So uh, he was kind of over listening and I thought, well, fuck, I need to show him, you know. And, and so I started pulling out my phone and videoing myself doing this, doing that. And... Um, along the way people started to jump on board like oh look at this bitch what's she up to you know and uh and then it started to build a little bit of a community especially for those that were have been down that road that i was down and um and needed that little bit of motivation and encouragement that fuck this chick's doing it like shit if she can do it fuck i might be able to do too so i started to grow this community and things like that and then i um I heard from my husband's mum and she messaged me. She said, hey, we're watching. We're watching you. We're, we're watching that you're really giving it a go. We want to let you know that the kids are here. When you're, you're ready, you come home back to New Zealand and you can see your kids. And, and that was like, oh, my God, I'm going to keep fucking going now, man. So I was like, double time, pull my phone out. <laughs> and... Um, yeah, if I fell over, pull my phone out. Hey guys, I just <laughs> fell over. You know, <laughs> um, because in my mind, they the people that I had intended for those videos to reach had reached them, mm. and so I needed to continue to keep showing them. You know, and um, yeah, here I am, two years later, with a massive um, community that supports and encourages me, and um, and I've got constant visitation with my children now. So. That's amazing. Also, yeah. how cool that it started from you just filming yourself on Facebook, hey? Ah, oh, just, well, I had lost everyone in the physical, my parents, my brothers, my family, everyone had kind of lost hope. And, it, you know, it wasn't their fault. I pushed them away because 
I, at that time um, in my life, I wasn't ready to hear shit like, he's in a better place, you know, talking about my son. He's in a better place. Oh, God, um, didn't want him to be down here, you know, because it's such a terrible place down here. And I was just like, oh, shut the fuck up, you know, like, I don't give a fuck what God wants. Like, I want him. You know, so I, I pushed my family away and things like I don't want to fucking hear that shit. Um, and so when I came out of it, you know, it was hard for me to try to rein them back in and get them to believe that I'm really going to give this a good go now. So for me to turn to um, Facebook, I knew that everyone was on Facebook. Mm. And um, yeah, and, and it worked, it worked, it worked. I'm tight as fuck with my, my parents now. They, my brothers are proud as fuck of me. Um, my family is, so nah, it fucking worked, man. That's awesome. Yeah. Do, you, do you find that since, um, you know, Facebook has been on this journey since, since that like two years um, began, do you, do you find that you've got like a family within the community? You know, like oh, people yeah. have been Hard on the journey with you and... Yeah, yeah, fuck yeah. Um, I didn't actually realize that I would be able to, uh, just by sharing my journey, the highs and the lows, I didn't realize that that was actually an, uh, encouraging and inspiring other people. I just was like, fuck, I found the outlet because I'm not about that life of going to counsellors because I just, I'm just like, ah, oh, and nobody got time for that, you know. You, I went there, I unloaded for one hour and then you told me to fuck off till next week. You know, and I'm like, you didn't give me no tools on how to deal with everything I just unloaded. So I turned to Facebook and that became my counseling. Anything that was on my mind, fuck, I just put it out there. I don't give a fuck who was listening. I had just finally found something where I could unload and then turn my phone off. Boom. Holy shit. I feel way lighter. You and know, it was <laughs> And I'm and I'm sorry that I've put it all on your fellow's shoulders, you know. <laughs> but I feel lighter. That was my whole thing. So, yeah, no, nah, it's been fucking awesome. That's why I do a lot of traveling. Um, I try to get out there and meet the people that have supported me right from the start. Because without them, I most definitely wouldn't be here. Um, so yeah, I think that um, you. I don't know if you realize realize or not, but you are actually probably counseling people as well without even knowing, you know, like people are yeah. seeing your videos and they're relating to you and they're, you know, like they're getting that kind of like, cause I remember I was listening to your live the other night, you, you went, you went live and the things yeah. that you were saying, I was just like, yes. I was like, where's mm. this girl been? Like, I don't even know you, but I felt so connected and just the things that you were yeah. saying with like your struggles and your triumphs and your success. Yeah, yeah. And I think- I just don't think that um, too many people uh, um, talk about it. I know there's a lot of people that have um, had been down Struggle Street, but they just don't talk about it openly. And for me, I was in a situation where if I didn't, I, I had no one to talk to. That's how it all started. I had no one to fucking talk to, you know, and um, and yeah, I think I I definitely don't give a fuck what anyone um, thinks, because at the end of the day, when I was sitting on the ground down fucking down a dark alleyway in Struggle Street, where the fuck were those people then? Mm. All those people with their judgment and their fucking, where the fuck were you when I needed you? You weren't anywhere. So why do you think I would need your opinions now? You know? Yeah. And I think that's what also um, uh, attracts people is because a lot of people aren't that open in that because it, it, there are a lot of people that worry about, uh, you know, others' opinions. That's why I try to strongly encourage people not to give a fuck. Don't give a fuck. They're not paying your bills. Mm. They're not putting food on your in your children's bellies. They're not paying for the roof over your kids' heads. Why should they matter? You know, all the energy that you are investing into worrying about these people that play no part in your journey, you actually could be investing their energy over here to something more productive that will benefit your fucking journey and your children's. You know, so yeah. So what, what's your background? Like, you know how you said you moved to, um, you moved to Aussie 
you've moved to Aussie mm. and um, then your son passed away. And I saw this, you've said, you've still quite um, open with this, how you turned to meth and prostitution mm. as well. Um, do, can we talk a little bit about that and what led you on that path? Cause I really like the story of you coming out the other side. What led me down the path of drugs and prostitution? Um, well, it was this traumatic event because, um, and I think I like to make it clear that for 27 of my years, I was stone cold sober. Mm. You know, I was, uh, I was about my husband. I was about my children. I couldn't give a fuck about the rest of the world. Uh, all my, my entire life was under my fucking roof. And that's the type of person I was. Um, and then this traumatic event happened that none of us could have prepared for, you know, my family hasn't had a, a child pass away, um, you know, we haven't, I think the last child that passed away in my family should be older than me, so, mm. and that was years ago, um, so my uh, no one could prepare, and, and even, even still, you don't prepare for that, when it happened, it was like, fuck, you see this shit on TV, this don't happen to me, you know, this don't happen to me and my fucking children and my husband, um, and I suppose I just, I just didn't know, uh, what to do, and I sought refuge in meth methamphetamine, because it was, my, my options were to go this way to counselling, which would be maybe one hour a week, you know, um, I can't even imagine how many fucking weeks I would have had to go to grievance counselling for me to uh, gather the tools required for me to be able to get through that traumatic event. Or I could go over here, pick up a pipe, and within 10 minutes, I've forgotten the whole fucking event took place. So it was, it was about that quick fucking, I need to get rid of this feeling. Um, and then obviously with addiction, you know, you need to pay for that you know, somehow. And so that led me to prostitution, um, because I thought, well, I've got a body, you know, um, I fucking, I can use it. These men want, um, my body mm. and I want their money because I need that meth because I need to fucking bury all these feelings that I'm feeling bury my reality and so that's how it just it just goes from one thing to another yeah and that, that's pretty much how I fucking got into this yeah sorry to take it away from the serious note but I saw your video that you posted today off the live man you must have had some yeah. crazy stories from your prostitution days like the one with the guy and he was lying on his tummy oh yeah <laughs> what no, was yeah, that? That was fucked. yeah that was fucked um yeah, there's, there's, uh, yeah, it's crazy, it's crazy, but at the end of the day, it's like, hey, well, fuck, I need that money, yeah. you know, yeah. you want to play this game, fuck, sweet ass, let's play, but give me, you better pay me first, chief. <laughs> what did he actually want, oh, because for people that are not listening, uh, that are listening, they haven't seen the video, Nick, you are saying that you, you know, you walked out to do, you do the deed for your client. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> lying on his stomach and pretty much his bum was facing towards you yeah 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 he What's wanted that? me to look his ass <laughs> <laughs> and you were just like do you know i'm a girl like what are you yeah doing? yeah i was like oh i don't know why you didn't get a mail like fuck he would have licked your ass and fucked it i just <laughs> don't even know but you know there's a lot of men that they are actually they do like that but they feel like um if they get a female to do that you know, okay. then they're not gay. Yeah. You know, and it's like, oh, fuck, and I don't deserve the shit I'm feeling used out here. <laughs> um, yeah, fucking well, using me as, as some kind of cover up. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, I've oh, heard well. some stories on this podcast, Doad, about that, about people, you know, um, gay people being in straight relationships with kids and stuff. Yeah, yeah, cover yeah. up their sexuality. Um, so yeah. Really quickly, one of the reasons I wanted to get you on this podcast as well, not only because you're freaking amazing and I love everything you're about, but also because on your live, you said you were bisexual. Mm. And, and I just loved what you had to say about it. And you were just like, who gives a fuck what you are? Yeah, because I um, somebody asked me, you know, um, well, I, had, I did say that I was bisexual. And somebody asked me, like, um, how did you feel about telling, you know, people? that you were bisexual and it, the first thing I wanted to you know state was that when you tell someone that is only because you want to you don't you are not expected to tell people what your sexuality is 
you know, whether, um, you know, even when I told my parents, I, I don't even, I don't even think I told my parents. I, I, the only one I specifically told was my, um, 16 year old son. And, you know, for obvious reasons and how I told him was just like, <laughs> Trey, you know, how, you know, like, uh, fucking met women like men. And he's like, yeah. And I'm like, yeah, well, mum likes women as well. And he was like, oh, you know. <laughs> and I was just like, hey, it is what it is. You know, you're going to love me regardless. You know, <laughs> who I fucking go to bed with is none of your goddamn business. Yeah. So in the rest of the world, you know, I'm just like, if someone chooses to tell you about their sexuality, that's a choice that they have made. And I just don't think uh, anyone has the right to expect um, somebody else's uh, sexuality. That's, that doesn't belong to you. That belongs to this person. That's theirs. And they shouldn't be made to feel ashamed of it. You know? So for me, I've had a, um, I, I had a baby at 14. I met my, um, my older boy's dad at like 13. And I stayed with him till 19. And then we broke up for two weeks and I met this man that was 10 years older than me. I stayed with him for two years and then I left him for my husband, who I then had the three babies to. So ever since like 14, I have been wifed up with men, you know? Um, but there was always that thing in the back of my mind, like, fuck, I was... Uh, <laughs> I think I was in denial and I would actually take it out on my men, you know, like I would say, why the fuck are we watching Juicy Shaw? You know, you're just trying to look at this bitch's tits, you know, and I think it was me because I was looking and I was um, putting it on to him and he was like, fuck, I'm not even watching it for that. And I was like, fuck your shit. And I turned back and that's all I'm staring at is this bitch at J. Wells fucking tits, you know, so... And when I got out of jail two years ago and I decided, you know what, I'm going to make a commitment to myself that I am not going to run into the arms of another man. You know, I'm going to, I have been shaped and molded to be what these men want me to be ever since the age of 14, be the perfect girlfriend, the perfect wife, the perfect mother, you know, blah, 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 blah. Um, and then I thought as well, well, hey, you know, maybe I'll fucking see what this whole, uh, you know, thing about females is like why not i mean shit let's see what let's have a dabble you know <laughs> um yeah and and i have and and then i kind of realized oh hang on a minute fuck and hell it's like uh, so many emotions and so <laughs> many fucking all in one ball and i'm like holy shit i'm trying to figure me out and now i gotta figure you out and you know, we are just two of the same species. And <laughs> um, so, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I, and how I put it is, hey, man, one day I might want chicken and the next day I might want a steak. Hey, who, who am I? You know, like, fuck, why not? So, so that's the, the boat that I'm rowing at the moment. I don't know what my future, you know, I don't know whether I end up with a female, whether I end up with a man. I don't want to think about that shit. I just want to have fun. Yeah. Well, what do you think? What do you think of the physical side of being with a woman then? Did you oh, I love it. Yeah, I fucking love it. Um, but the, wait, the, the funny thing is, is when I'm with a female, I don't actually like them touching me. I just like touching them and doing everything to them. I just don't like it uh, done to me. Yeah. So. Oh. That's interesting. Maybe are you? Yeah, usually, I know. Are you usually like the dominant lover, no matter if it's like a male or a female? No, no, no. When it's a male, oh my god, oh my god, oh my fucking god, you know. But when it's when I'm with a female, I just naturally am become the dominant one. Hmm. Okay. Are you are you attracted to um, certain females? You know, like are you? No, I um, no, nah, fuck it. No, I don't know. I, I mean, I don't know. I walk into foot lockers. I, I don't know exactly what I'm going in there for, but shit, it'll jump out at me when I see it. I know it. <laughs> and you're always kind of drawn towards a certain shoe as well, eh? Like, oh, oh wow, well, yeah. I mean, one day I might like Nikes, the next day Adidas. Who knows? Oh, hey, if the shoe fits, all good. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's it.
did you so, yeah. wait, so so was your first experience with a girl only like recently because i mean like you said oh no 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 um it was way back in that but still i was like i actually cheated on someone with my fucking mate um but i was still like no nah, no nah, that's not my route you know like of of like when i got pregnant at 14 i was like okay well this is obviously the road that i'm taking mm -hmm. even though growing up and shit you know i remember fucking um <laughs> having a sleepover with a girl and we were tip and tail and i grabbed her foot and was riding her fucking sock you know like <laughs> <laughs> Um, so, but then when I got pregnant at 14, you know, I was like, okay, well, fuck, obviously I'm supposed to be with men for my life, you know, but um, it wasn't until, and, and yeah, I would, you know, I would hook up with a chick here and there, but I was just like, no, 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 you know, I've already had a baby, shit, this is my, my thing over here, so yeah, when I, two years ago, I was like, okay, nah, you know what, this is me, I actually do like fucking females, and I like men, mm. you know, I'm not gonna fucking try and hide it now, and, and now I'm at the thing where, hey, it is what it is, whatever the universe provides is what I'm gonna eat, nah. <laughs> how, how, did that, how did that go in jail? Like, what's it like in jail? For nah, that? man, nah, it, nah, nah, like nah, it was like, yeah, nah, because in there, people are too territorial and shit like that you don't know uh, if you yeah you know nah, fuck people are too territorial too territorial you don't know if this person's owned you know and the last thing you want to do is get into it because you staring at amy over here and oh fuck yeah. eyes down next <laughs> eyes down play it safe <laughs> so it's not like orange right. and you black nothing like that <laughs> nah fuck no no nah, no nah. but yeah no nah. i just stuck to um you get a a uh, fucking prison issue. Where is it? Oh, uh, you get a prison issue. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's all right. <laughs> you get this, um, this fucking prison issue in jail. And so this just, like, became my fucking best friend in jail. And I just thought, oh, you yeah, know, that's way safer than fucking around with girls, you know, because... Wait, yeah. wait, what? I missed that whole thing. What? What is it? What's the prison? The prison what? Oh yeah, when you get into jail, you get one of these underarms. And so I just chucked a glove on it. Because <laughs> oh, <laughs> I was just like, oh, I don't want to get fucking caught up in this shit, you know? I mean, these you're, girls. you're in you're in prison. You got to do what you got to do, right? You got to fucking do what you got to do. Yep, hard out. That's gonna keep you out of trouble. Damn. Yep. Okay. Um. So okay, so we went on the journey from you coming out the other side, and how did how did you um? beat your your addictions and and was it I think I've seen on one of your lives it was just kind of you know you were you were thinking about your son who had passed away and what he would actually want his mom yeah. to be right yeah well um you need to um well, I had to look at it and think okay so I was sober for 27 years you know and then I turned into a raging meth addict you know if, if we just not focus on the fact that I'm a drug addict and we 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 rewind the the real you know and we have a look at this particular part of the timeline you know and maybe if we do a little bit of repairing on this particular part um that might alter the you know the course that i ended up taking so when i was in jail i decided you know what fucking um this is the first time really that i'm gonna have to deal with this particular part of the timeline, the trauma, mm. um, because I had been running from it. Every time it tried to come up in my mind, I fucking drowned it out with methamphetamine. But now that I was in jail, I was like, fuck, that's not an option. And that's quite scary. Um, you're going to have to face your fucking demons head on, you know? And so I did. I thought, okay, I'm going to have to acknowledge the fact that he's not going to be able to come back. He's not coming back. I'm going to have to... Um, take responsibility for all the actions that I have taken since then, you know, because uh, I had spent so many years blaming everyone, blaming God, blaming my parents, blaming my husband, shit like that. And I, I was just deflecting it all because I didn't want to look at my fucking self. Um, and I had to do that. 
And, and I did. I did do that. And because I dealt with that particular part of the timeline, I dealt with that trauma, there was no need for me to continue masking it with methamphetamine. You know, because I had dealt with it. I wasn't taking methamphetamine prior to that, just for recreational uh, use, you know. I was taking it to mask something. And because I had dealt with it, there was no longer a need for me to mask it because it didn't exist anymore. I had dealt with it, so. So I feel like you're saying, um, you know, anyone that's struggling with addiction, it's 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 in your mental, right? You have to deal with that side of things. Yeah, you, you have to deal, deal with. with the pain. And a lot of people, they don't want to. They don't want to do it. It's too hard. Yeah. You know, it's just so much easier just to fucking uh, bury it. You need to realize you're not moving forward. Mm. You're not moving forward at all, you know. You're existing, but you're not fucking living. And you won't start living until you deal with that fucking trauma, you deal with that pain, you know, and then you you can carry on without that massive burden on your shoulders. So that's what I did. And it fucking worked. It's, I think mm. it's the hardest thing, you know, like loving yourself hey, and like digging really fucking deep to get to those deep issues and, and, and bring yeah. trauma to the surface and just being like, fuck, okay this is what's happening. I, I need to deal with this rather than just numbing it. And it's, yeah, it's yeah. really hard, a really hard thing to do, to do. So I really admire your mental strength. And I just, I am mm. just so grateful that I had the opportunity to say it to your face that oh, fuck, cool. man, kudos to you. <laughs> yeah, it's been hard, but um, worth it. Mm. Definitely worth it. I mean, I see my, see my kids and, you know, I listen to my son call me gay you know, <laughs> just sure makes, like, oh. my, makes my entire day, you know, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I worked so hard to come this far to, for my son to call me gay, yeah. he, he calls, he says everything I fucking do is gay, so, <laughs> how old is he? He's 10, yeah, he's 10, she's 9, and my um, oldest boy's 16. Cool, so are they there in New Zealand and you get to see them? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just went and took them to a uh, safe haven before this whole lockdown. They're out on the farm and fucking living their best life. And yeah, so I'll be picking them up straight after this. Cool. That's awesome. What do they think about mum being like, I guess, Facebook, Instagram famous? Do they know? Uh, they fucking, yeah, fuck yeah, they know. They love it. Yeah. Sometimes when I pick them up, as soon as they get in the car, mum, why aren't, why aren't you doing a live? I'm like, oh, yeah, you know, and I'll have my live and they'll grab my phone and fucking run off. Kia ora you know, they love it. My son, he he's a heart out on TikTok oh, and he's yeah. like, mum, I'm going to I'm gonna change my name to CWK Geordie so oh. that when people type it in, I'm like, bruh, I'm feeling ah. used and abused. He's smart, he's smart. Yeah, oh, he's smart as he jumps on my live. He's like, hey, whānau follow my page i'm like oh bray you better shut your ass there boy yeah no nah, cool so um what what does it stand for for people that don't know your instagram handle um cwk is uh well that's my facebook page cook fun no court at all with nick i wish i could just change my facebook page i started it because um that, that terminology cooked is like oh bro fuck this comes random you know, those kinds of random as, um, and then I just thought, well, that's exactly what I am, you know, like, fuck, I don't want to, if I called it meth recovery, you know, I don't want to be bound to fucking meth, you know, just constant, oh, oh, fuck that, I'll get bored as hell, so I thought, no, no, cooked, fun, no court at all, yeah, that's what I'm about, because, man, one day I want to talk about, you know, men fucking lying on their stomach with their ass out, the next day I might want to talk about depression. The next day I might want to yeah. talk about, you know, cooking. Um, I just didn't want to be bound. So, yeah. yeah. How, how does a normal day for you look? Because like you said, I mean, it, like, do you have, do you meet up with Facebook and they tell you what you have to post or are you just like, oh, I've got these oh, ideas? Oh, no, fuck no. No, 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 no. I'll post when I want. Um, okay, that's good. Yeah, I'll, I'll post when I want. How does a normal day look? Oh, fucking hell. I don't know. Where do you live? Because there's always people uh, at your house. Oh, I live in Huntley. Mm. Um, yeah, I live with my mate and her two daughters. 
Um, but we live in an old, like, fucking police station, so it is massive. Oh, wow. Um, so we, we get our own fucking, you know, I, I could go a whole day without even seeing any of them. Um, and and I, I love my space, so even when I'm home and shit, I'm always in my room. This is where, yeah, this is where I'm at, so. Yeah, because I can see you've got, like, all your wigs and stuff in the background. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hard out. How did you even come up with your characters? Is that just from life experience? Yeah, from life experience, um, I go for my walks and that, and I, or I just keep an eye on what the fuck's going on, trending on Facebook, you know, like um, stupid shit. And then I think, oh, yeah. Or, or if I start seeing, you know, when this whole lockdown went down and people were fucking getting too easily offended and I thought, oh, yeah, no, nah, I need to fucking do something because I need to show you fellas how you look, how you sound, you know? <laughs> so, yeah. I, 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 um, I like to do my skits and all the characters in that my own self because then people are going to get offended. Say I bought some other characters in and I bought a, a park here and mm. it, it will get flipped and then people are going to be like, oh, why did you use that person? Yeah. Why couldn't you? So I'm like, okay, you know, I'll play all of the fucking characters myself so nobody can feel targeted yeah. and shit like that, you know, because I've got to keep that in mind so I don't want people feeling fucking targeted. You know, well, that's so. the world of social media, right? Eh? Every like, like your skit, everyone's going to be offended by, oh, some- by something, you know. Like, yes, yeah, fucking stupid. What are, <laughs> What are your hobbies um outside of creating? Like, what do you like to do in your spare time? Oh fuck, I like to um, I like to get out there, eh? That's probably why this lockdown's been fucking out of it. I like to get out there, um, I like to do art. I like to um, have routine and structure, man. Fuck, I used to live every day. These last two years, I've lived every day out of my diary. If it ain't in my diary, I'm not fucking doing it. I literally have to schedule in days where I fucking um, have a rest, you know, in my diary. And since it's locked down, I haven't even looked at it. It's probably fucking feeling abandoned, you know? So, yeah, yeah, yeah. And this, this lockdown's been testing as, but what I keep telling myself and everyone else is you know we're sacrificing our mental health in order to save lives right now and that's what we're fucking doing and that we should feel good about that because realistically you know we don't have to stay home i could fucking jump in my car right now and go to one of my mates you know but i choose not to Mm. even though my uh, my mental health is taking a beating because I'm sitting in the same fucking room every day, <laughs> you know. Uh, it's a mess. It's a good sacrifice. We're saving lives. So. Yeah. And I fingers crossed we should coming. be there soon. But um, yeah. one of the skits I loved also was when you um, <laughs> were being Jacinda Ardern, the Prime Minister. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I like doing that. Oh, sorry. I was, I was going to say, I was going to ask you if you've met her yet, but I saw you post a picture that you have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I met her. Fuck, you wouldn't believe how many people have been messaging me like, hey, why is she in your fucking bubble? I'm like, oh, get the fuck out of here. Holy shit. Hey, she's not fucking two meters away. Like, literally swearing messaging me. Yeah, I I, I just decided to do those Jacinda Ardern videos because I was just like, oh, bro. I, again, whenever I do skits, there is always an underlying message, mm. you know, and, and I needed people to see how ridiculous, especially some of those reporters, this is how ridiculous you fucking sound. Maybe if you watch this, you will see how fucking pathetic some of your questions are. And then I needed to do one because I needed people to, um, that were watching her announcements I needed to. I needed them to see how fucking pathetic their questions were on those lives, you know. So the only way for me to do that is a jump on a public live and say, "Hey, fuck yeah," rah, rah, or put it into some type of little fucking skit, which not only will pump that message out, but will also give me a break from the seriousness of my live streams, mm. you know, and give me an opportunity to be a little bit. Of a little bit creative and things like that. So it was like, yeah, fuck yeah, I'll choose that route. Yeah. 
They were great. <laughs> Bloody great. I, I saw that cause, um, on your live also that you, uh, you like, you know, for travel and you said you're allowed to leave the country soon. I don't know when the heck we're going to be able to travel next, but you wanted to go to the Cook Islands. I saw that. Um, yeah, I do. But I just am worried about the fucking Wi-Fi there. Yeah, um, I'm, I'm half um, Rarotongan. I know it doesn't look like it. So pale. But um, <laughs> let me know if you want to go over. My auntie, she's like bougie. She owns a nightclub over there and stuff. And she's got all good. What? So. Come on, come oh, fuck. Yeah, fuck you, yeah, King. No, I think it's Vodafone's going over there. Hey. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, anything. I, that's the only reason I haven't gone over there because, you know, like if I go and do something, I like to share uh, share that experience. And I was just like, fuck. I fucking go crazy if I go somewhere and I can't fucking jump on and, and talk to the supporters and things like that, you know? So you're saying with your mental health, you know how you're like, well, you're struggling a little bit with being inside and being isolated. Yeah. And stuff. How do you, how do you, um, you know, what's your kind of like meditation and stuff for your mental health? What do you do to kind of get that on track? My fucking pro satisfier too. Your, your what? Pro satisfier too. <laughs> oh, and I took it out, eh? I, I, I fucking, um... I talk to the supporters and things like that, you know, whether I'm feeling good or whether I'm feeling ratchet as fuck, man, I lay it on them. Mm. Um, what else do I do? I try and get out for a walk, but, you know, the weather here in Huntley has been fucking shit. So, and, and I just don't want to get myself into the habit of hopping on my bed and watching a Netflix. I don't want to fucking get into that habit, you know, because... Yeah. It'll be too hard for me to get back into the my normal shit once all the shit's over. So, mm. um, but just, it's been cool. A lot of people been reaching out to do podcasts and yeah. interviews and fucking shit like that. So that keeps me a little bit busy. Yeah, just because we got such a cool story, and I think it really needed to be shared. Um, I'll, I'll let you go. I'll just um quickly. Is it cool if I just ask like a couple of just like really like just dumb mindless questions just for fun? Yeah, hard. <laughs> Describe describe your perfect kiss in three words. Oh, wow. <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh shit. Long, soft, and oh my god. Warm? I don't know. I don't, oh my god, I've never had a cold kiss. That, yeah. that would be <laughs> <laughs> long soft and warm all right we'll take that um, <laughs> and um if you were like to go on a date would you rather like have a date in like cook dinner and watch a movie and stuff or go out probably go out because we all know where the date in is gonna lead so probably go out you know so they can spend a bit of money on me and then and then we'll go back and do what we would have done if we had a state indoors anyway so yeah, yeah. now it's just a little a little bit more broke so that's cool <laughs> um yeah i kind of am but um uh, i'm real staunch to like uh i'm on my journey of self-discovery i'm still trying to figure out who i am i mm. still trying to love my own self and i just i met that thing where i don't think it would be fair to anyone if i tried to include them when i've got so much work to do you know so yeah. and that's so cool that you can recognize that as well yeah hard do you wash your legs in the shower? Yeah, hard. Okay. Anyway. <laughs> well, I got roasted when I was on the radio for that because, I mean, okay, I'm, I'm having a shower, right? Washing my face, doing all my top, blah, 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 you know, wash downstairs. And then just, the, the water and the soap just drip. Like, I don't get down and, like, I shave my legs. So that's kind of washing yeah. Oh yeah, no, same, same. I don't purposely like lift my legs up so that water just misses my body and aims straight for my legs. Ain't nobody got time for that. Thank yeah. You. Thank you. Thank you very much. I got roasted for that. Um, I got backs. <laughs> um, got your back. One more question for you is um, it's a dear diary question. It's something we do on the podcast where the listeners they just um, ask a question and then I'll, um, mm. I ask the guest. Um, the dear diary question today is where do you meet other gay people? In my DMs. <laughs> really? Yes. Up in your DMs? Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I oh, I'm not saying that I respond, but I'm just saying they're there. Are they usually the same kind of people? Or no. All different walks. All different walks. All different walks. So that's yeah. where you might mean gay, meet gay people, but I guess for, for everybody else, I don't fucking know. There's not really many gay gay clubs or anything in like Auckland. 
Oh, I've never been to fucking. Uh, I don't go to. I don't go anywhere actually. I really am quite fucking boring, to be honest. I um, yeah. I mean, this fucking lockdown is the most that I've I've I think I've drank more in this lockdown than I did last year, kind of shit. Um, so I, you definitely kind of won't see me at a club, you know, mm. waving my hands in the air like I just don't care. Yeah, nah. So DMs is probably the only spot that you'll catch me. So you're saying you might answer the DMs or depending? I don't like to because, fuck, I, I, I feel like if I respond in there, you know, like, I, it just might, I think it's just my nature that I might unknowingly lead them on and then you know so i'm just like okay just don't even go down that track you know if you know that your your kindness might be interpreted in another way that's potentially going to lead you to a to trouble you know and and we don't have energy for that so just yeah. don't reply you know i've blocked people because i'm just like oh man i'm sorry you know I, I, and i say it all the time i i take it as a compliment don't get me wrong but and I also take it as a trap. Like, yeah. you're trying to trap me. <laughs> <laughs> block, block. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, so that's me anyway. All right, cool. Well, hey, I really appreciate your time. I've got a lot out of that. I think everyone that's listening as well would have. Um, anything you want to leave on? Anything you want to? No, no, no. No, yeah, I will. I'm keen about that Cook Islands thing straight up. Boy, 100%. Whenever, this, whenever we're allowed to travel again, come over. There's... So yeah. much content and stuff over there. It's absolutely beautiful. I try to go back at least like once or twice a year. Oh, yeah. Um, but yeah. Where, where are you? Where am I? Um, I in lockdown, I'm in Tauranga, but I'm based in Auckland. That's that's where I live. Yeah, so I'm Huntley's not far. So we'll have to mm. meet up sometime, have a drink. Yeah. Pro- properly meet you. But yeah, um, do you want to drop your, your handles and stuff and your Facebook for people to... Yeah, up. yeah. So cooked fun, no caught it all with Nix is my Facebook. Um, CWK Nix is my Instagram. Sweet, cool. And hey, um, keep mm. doing you, eh? You're absolutely yeah. amazing. You put a mm. smile on my face, and I know a whole lot of other people as well. Trust me. Whether mm. you've got a big mm. fan base, big fan base. So yeah, keep, so you. keep doing you. Take care, and um, I'll catch you soon. Yeah, that'll be cool. Yep, hard. All right. All right then. See you, girl. See ya. Take care. Love and light. See ya.